This is Michael Halper with Sales Scripter, and today we are going to talk about how to create a multi-level marketing sales script or a sales script for network marketing. And before we get going, I just want to uh, put out a disclaimer there that I, sh I share this information today not as a MLM guru or an MLM expert. I come to this as a subject matter expert in the area of creating sales messages and sales scripts. So you may have more knowledge or experience in working in the MLM world than I have, and I won't disagree with that. So you can disagree with and uh, dispute or challenge some of my ideas for around creating sales scripts, but, but I by no means am an expert in the area of MLM. And the other thing is, is that, uh, well, and so just keep that in mind. The other thing is that w even if you have a lot of experience in the MLM world, I am extremely confident that there will be a few nuggets or a few tips pr presented here today that will help you to see things in a different way. So uh, let's just get started. What we'll do here is we're going to talk about how to create a, an how to create an MLM sales script. But before we create a sales script, we're going to create a sales message for MLM. That's not a script. That's the actual message of what you should be saying. And from that, we can then create a script. But before we create the script, I want to take a step back and talk about the sales process that you can take prospects through when you're selling MLM. Then we will apply basically the sales message with the sales process to create different sales scripts that you can use when talking with prospects. And then we'll wrap up with talking about a few objections that can often come up when trying to sell MLM. So uh, let's just get started and with, so let's just get started with talking about how to organize a sales message for selling MLM or network marketing products. And the reality is, is that regardless of what what product you sell or what company you work for, most likely at a minimum, you'll need two different sales messages. You're going to need a sales message for the product that you're selling, the ultimate actual physical or product that is part of the, the, the network or the, that, that, is, uh, that you are a distributor for. And then you'll also have a different, completely different sales message for the business opportunity. These are two totally different things that you're selling. At any given time, you might talk about both of these to the people that you're selling to. So it's very important, at least in your head and probably best on paper to have these separated as two different sales messages. And regarding which sales message you lead with or which one you, you which script or sales message you start with, it could be different depending on who you're talking to. There may be a situation where at first you start with your script and sales message for the actual product being sold. And then, you know, depending on how that conversation goes, you may switch at some point to talking about the business opportunity to that particular individual. And, you know, maybe you end up selling both or you might end up bouncing back if they don't aren't interested in the business opportunity, then you go back to try to sell the product. Uh, there could be some scenarios where you lead with the business opportunity. So you're talking to someone, you, they, you don't even talk about the product that, uh, that you're a distributor or a representative for. And you know, maybe you get to a point where they're just not interested in the business opportunity. And then you, you transition that, op, that's, that conversation to then talk about the product. Maybe you can sell the product if you can't sell the business opportunity. And you might bounce back and forth. So uh, that is... We're not going to get into too many details of how to bounce back and forth and when to, but let's start. But the starting place here is to just create these sales messages. Now, because the product being sold is so unique for each a different person and salesperson and MLM opportunity, uh, we're not going to be able to go through the. We're not going to go through a process to create a sales message for the product. But most business opportunity situations are fairly similar. So we're actually going to go through a process to create a sales message for the business opportunity. And this process that we go through step by step, you can actually use to create your sales message for the product that you're actually selling. 
So what we'll do is we'll go through a step-by-step -step process and we're gonna start with the actual product being sold. The product in this case, don't get confused, not the actual product that you're selling, but the product, the business opportunity is one of the products you sell. Even knowing it, even knowing you might not see it as an actual product, it is a product. So the business opportunity is a product and we'll take that and then we'll to create a sales message. We're gonna think about who is the, the type of person, the target audience, that we're creating the sales message for. What are some benefits that that buyer type will realize when they use our product? When basically, when someone be, when someone be, uh, agrees to pursue the business opportunity, how can you improve their life? What are some pain points and problems that you can make go away? What are some questions that you could ask? Uh, we believe that here that the best salesperson is the one that asks the best questions. So definitely want some questions in your sales message. And then what is an example that we can share as we're trying to build interest? So basically to create a sales message, we're gonna go through each of those steps and just basically brainstorm a few bullet points in each of those steps. And then we can use all those bullet points to create your sales script for MLM. So let's just start with the product. As I already mentioned, the product that we're creating a message for is the business opportunity and you might, whatever sales message you're creating, whatever product you're selling, take a step back and think about, okay, what are some features of the product that I sell? What is included? So for the business opportunity, what is included or involved is you would end up being maybe a distributor of such and such product or a representative of such and such service or product. It pays this much commission. It creates a recurring passive income stream. This is where you would put all the details about the actual business opportunity then you could go one step further to think about, okay, how is what I'm trying to sell to this person different from their other options? Now, if you're selling a product, you would often think about, okay, how is my product different from the competition? Well, if you're selling a business opportunity, the, the competition is often a, a regular day job, you know, working for a company. So how is the business opportunity different from working for an employer, so to speak? So the way the way so the ways that it's different and the differentiation is well you get to work for yourself instead of working for a boss or working for a company you can have a more scalable level of income if you have a, a salary of so many dollars per year that's pretty much what you get unless you get a raise once a year or promoted so this is a more scalable level of income it can also be a second income stream if you work for a company and you have a salary you just have one income stream. You don't have the opportunity to pick up other stuff at that company. So this is a, a second income stream. Then you could go one step further to think about, okay, what are some really interesting facts or bragging points about the company that this uh, business opportunity is for? So, okay, we've been in business for 25 years, the best product on the market, won awards for. So this is where you would put some of the bragging points for the actual company or product that you're selling. So that pretty much checks the box for what is the product that you're creating a sales message for. By the way, a lot of salespeople just stop with that. They organize their thoughts or they have a lot of knowledge in their head in those areas. And they just go out and talk about that with everybody that they're trying to sell to. So every, all the steps that we're going to talk about now are really bonus on top of what the, the normal salesperson does. So the next step is to think about, okay, who are we creating a sales message for in terms of the target audience? Now, this is important. We, the sales message that we create for you is going to be sophisticated in the standpoint that if you're just talking about the product, you can say the same thing to everybody. But in our case, we're going to ask good questions. We're going to talk about pain points. And those can all change when we change the buyer type. For example, Let's say that we're selling a business opportunity for, to people that are working as employees. These are people that have a paycheck, that go to the office, you know, work Monday through Friday. So that's one type of buyer. Now, if we were to sell the business opportunity to, to someone who's unemployed, we could sell the business opportunity to, to those two different types of people, but the, the benefits and, and pain points and questions would be very different. So this is where at this point in the sales message, we need to think about who are we trying to sell to? You could also sell the business opportunity to young professional people. Maybe that they're just out of college. Well, that's a, a different sales message because we can really try to emphasize certain things. Or you could try to sell this to somebody who's retired, who 
they they don't work at all, but you know they need to make money or they want a project to be active with someone at the end of their career, maybe a student still in, in school. All of these are different buyer types. Re regarding what you sell, what you can usually sell to different types of buyers. And in the B2B world, this might be selling to different industries or different people in an organization. So for demo purposes today, we're going to create a sales message for people that are working as employees. So these are maybe full-time employees, W-2 employees. Think of like the accountant that you know works Monday through Friday and has a, a salary and works for a big company or whatever. So that's who we're creating a message for. Now, you the sales message we create here today and sales scripts, you may be, maybe you can use exactly as is because you're going to target these people. But in your case, maybe you're going to target a slightly different audience. You can just sort of go through the same process and make changes. So the next step in the process is to uh, think about, okay, if we sell the business opportunity to people that are working as W-2 employees, what are the improvements that we can make for them? Because that's really how that's being able to communicate those key points is what's going to enable us to build interest. Uh, you know, in order to sell, you need to focus on what's in it for them. What's in it for me in terms of me being the prospect, the potential customer. So what's in it for them? Well, if we provide that product to that particular buyer type, what are some improvements we can make? Well, we can increase their wealth by creating a second stream of income. You know, if they're working as a W-2 employee and they add the business opportunity on top of that, we're not saying quit your job. You, we're saying make more money, have a second stream of income, create a passive income stream, achieve their personal financial goals, reduce financial stress, work for themselves on their own schedule, make it easier to start a business, have more free time to do the things they want to do. So the, these are the things that are attractive and that we can focus on to try to get that person to buy into what we're selling. Now, notice that these value points would be completely different if we're talking to someone who's unemployed and looking for work. Uh, it, it's a totally different sales message. So that's how the sales message becomes tailored to the particular people you're, you're talking to. Now, that may seem like a little bit of more work and it's a little bit more sophisticated, but that's where you get to the next level and you become extremely persuasive and really connect with the person that you're talking to. So let's move to the next step of the process and think about what is the pain that we can make go away. So if we help in with those benefits, then these are some pain points that we can make go away. Now, uh, here's a small trick that you could use. You could either just brainstorm, okay, here are some problems that I can make go away with if someone use, you know, pursues our business opportunity. But here's a trick. If you look at all of the benefits and improvements you make, for each improvement, there's an opposite pain point. So you can just basically think about what is the opposite of that? Or if I, if I'm, if I make that improvement, I take away what problem starts happening. So here's a list of pain points, not making as much money as they would like. Salary increases are slow and not enough. Difficult to start a business. It's not fun working for other people. It's not fun having a manager. Difficult to stay ahead of expenses, make progress towards financial goals, work a lot, never having free time. So those are very common pain points for someone who's just working the job Monday through Friday, the corporate person, right? So you can make those pain points go away with your business opportunity. By the, and that, that list of pain points was derived as opposite, inversely correlated uh, points to all of those benefits. Moving on to the next step, which is, okay, well, what are some questions that we could ask? The best salesperson is the one that asks the best questions. Well, if we help with those pain points, for each pain point, there's a corresponding question that could be asked, and we call these pain questions. So if you help someone to solve the problem that they're not making as much money as they would like, well, a question to ask is, how interested are you in finding new ways to increase your income? So anyways, here, here are, a whole, are a whole set of uh, pain questions to, to, uh, to ask. There's another set of questions asked that are slightly different, and we call these current state questions. These are questions that try to identify what's going on in the area where we want to sell something. So if you sold a car, current state questions would be, do you have a car today? What year is it? How many miles does it have? How is it running? What not? So in this case, if we're talking to people that are working as employees, what do you do? How long have you been doing that? How do you like it? What did you do before? Uh, what do you like most about what you do? What, what motivated you to get into that? How long have you been working there? Is there opportunity for growth? 
So this is where you're trying to feel out what's going on in the particular area. Now, these are, we call these current state questions, but these could uncover pain as well. Um, so we, but we just try to keep these questions separate in these two different categories. And one reason why is then you can keep them separate in your head and know where you're at in terms of the different questions that you are going to ask. The last step is to think of a customer example, a name drop example, a great way to create interest as well as build uh, credibility with the person that you're talking to is share an example. If you help it with all these different things and help to solve these problems, well, share an example of where you've done that and that can really help you, especially right before you, it's time to close, share an example and create just enough interest to get you to the next step. So here's a name drop example. Hey, I recruited Tom and he's worked and he, he, I recruited Tom and he was working at, as an accountant. He felt like there was not enough, not career and financial growth. He signed up as a distributor and was able to create a second income stream and was able to reach his financial goal of paying off his house. So I put some text in red here. The reason why is because there's a few points in here that come from the other, that are basically derived from other blocks here. So where I mentioned there was not enough career and financial growth, that's a pain point. So we're sharing actually the pain point that Tom felt. The next red text is signed up as a distributor. That's the product or solution that we sold them. Created a second income stream. That's one of the benefits that we delivered. And then was able to reach his financial goal of paying off his house. That's another uh, value point, benefit point. So we're able to derive uh, some points from our, our sales message to create this name drop example. Now that's our sales message for selling the business opportunity. You could go through all of those steps for the actual product you sell. You could go through that same process for different audiences. Let's say you wanna to try to go on college campus and recruit students, totally different sales message, um, but you can go through that same process. Now that may look like a lot, looks like an eye chart, don't really know what to do with all that. The reality is, is that all of those steps and those boxes on that last slide, we can use to create building blocks. Each of those is basically a building block and we can use those building blocks to real easily create uh, sales scripts. And I'm gonna show you on the late, I'm gonna come back to the subject of sales scripts in a minute, but we basically use all those building blocks to create uh, sales scripts. Now, the reason why we, we skip that is we're gonna talk a little bit about sales process because I'm gonna give you a few different sales scripts for different steps of your process when you're trying to sell MLM. So we'll come back to that in a minute, but let's start with what I believe are three steps that you should go through regardless of what you sell. And so step one is the interaction. This is the first time you're talking to someone, could be a cold call, could be a cold email, could be meeting someone while networking. Then the next step in your sales process is to have a real conversation. The interaction is usually really quick. The conversations where, okay, well, both parties are listening and paying attention and agree to be there. And then you progress to some sort of explanation step. This is where you get into detail in terms of what you sell. Now we refer, well, actually, so we refer to this. Okay, actually, let me back up. So one of the things that most people do and I, is they skip usually from talking to someone for the first time to jumping real quickly to talking about what it is they sell and try to talk to someone, try to talk someone into buying what they sell. So they basically skip the conversation. Whether you sell MLM or anything, you can greatly improve your, your sales process and your sales efforts by focusing more on just starting conversations. And this applies even more with selling MLM. So the, this is, I point this out because of the sales scripts that I'm gonna show you here in a minute. Now, those three steps, we, refer, we call that uh, the ICE sales process, I-C-E. By the way, I'll include a link in the description of this video that provides a training module that goes into detail on the ICE sales process. So that I'm gonna go through this really quickly, but if you want more information, there's a completely separate uh, training video that goes through the ICE sales process. But to go through this real quick, as I mentioned, the first step is the interaction. This is maybe your cold call. So we'll give you a, a sales script for the cold call, but the cold call primarily should be focused more on the prospect than on you. Should be really quick, ask a few questions possibly. Then you progress to the conversation. So this is a very key step in multi-level marketing and network marketing is talking with someone, sitting down and, and, and whatnot. So the conversation is what you're trying to drive towards 
in in um, in B two B selling, this could look more like an appointment or an online meeting. In multi level marketing, this could look more like meeting for a cup of coffee, meeting for lunch, getting together. In the conversation, you want half the attention on the prospect and half the attention on you. And you want to basically ask some good questions and start to build interest. And your goal is to try to drive to the next step in the process, which is the explanation. This is where you're getting into real key details on where you're really explaining what it is that you're trying to sell and trying to talk someone into. So um, again, I, I'm not, I'm not going to get into how to organize the explanation. Watch that other training module on that. But those three steps, basically, it, you know, in, in a lot of cases, those three steps could be individual times. Ind they could be different. Let me start over here. They could be talking to the prospect at different times and on different days. They could be three totally different steps. But in reality, they can be condensed to, be, to happen at the same time especially in multi-level marketing, you're going to condense these steps. For example, what might happen in a lot of cases is you reach out and that might be the interaction and you get someone to meet you on another day and then you condense the conversation and the explanation to the same time. Let's say you maybe meet over coffee and you have the conversation and then you explain the, the program and maybe the business opportunity or the product after that. And so this is what we call the instant explanation. Even knowing you're only meeting one time for the conversation explanation, I recommend you still have an understanding of what those two steps are and be aware of where you're at so that can be uh, where you're at because that can help you to organize your thoughts and organize your questions and take the person through a more structured process when you're talking to them. Another way that this could happen is let's say you meet someone uh, out and about and you end up having the conversation and the interaction at the same time. And we refer to this as the instant meeting. And maybe then you get back together on another day. But really, if you meet someone and you're getting into a conversation with them in multi-level marketing, uh, you, you might end up just plowing through all of it at the same time. And that might look like it's like a one call close. Again, you meet them and talk to them about everything on the same day. And so again, it, it might only be talking one time, but you still go through all those three steps. All of that's discussed in detail in another training module. Now let's talk about combining our sales message with that sales process to create sales scripts. And we're basically going to come back to those building blocks. And so the first thing I'm going to give you is a cold call script. And notice that I put the in parentheses here, uh, formal. The, the reason why I put this in formal is that this flow here I'm going to show you aligns more with our B, B2B formal cold call script, you're calling a prospect, and you're, uh, you're using this script. What I'll show you next is more of an informal social script. So I know that what I'm going to show you now probably doesn't apply if you're calling up your brother-in-law. So let's just fly through this, and then we'll come back to the social. So here's an introduction. Hello, Mary. This is Michael Halper. I'm with Company X. Have I caught you in the middle of anything? The, great. The reason for the call is I help people that are working as employees and you can share any of these benefits. You can share any of these benefits. You could share one or two, uh, depending on how long they are. Then you do a, a sales takeaway, but I'm not sure if you are interested in any of those, and that's why I'm reaching out. And then you try to ask some questions, and these questions are designed to find pain and find a reason to have a conversation. You could also ask some of your current state questions. Then you could also ask, well, the goal there is hopefully you ask some questions and find a reason to have a conversation on another day and close for the next step, which is to have that conversation. If you can't do that, you might want to share some pain points. Uh, before you go for the close to uh, close them on a conversation, you probably want to share a little bit of detail about who you are, why, why you're calling. Again, this is the formal call script. Based on what you shared, it might make sense to talk in more detail. The reason why is, as I mentioned, I'm with Company X, and we provide a business opportunity uh, to, to people that are working as full-time employees. And it's basically a distributor of such and such product. It pays this commission. And so here are some of your product details. Then right before you go for the close, you can share your name drop example to build a little bit of interest. I recruited Tom. He was working as an accountant at the time. He felt like there was not enough career growth. 
and he signed up as a distributor, was able to create a second stream of income and pay off his house. So right, before, you're doing that right before you go for the close. But Mary, I've called you out of the blue. I don't know if this is the best time to discuss this. Are you available for a brief meeting? And you could share again some of your benefits here, and you close for the the the, the call. So again, that's just a flow of how to organize that sales message and those building blocks into a formal cold call script. Now, I certainly know when you're doing multi-level marketing, what you're, who you're reaching out to first is your friends and family network. So you don't want to use that formal of a cold call script. So here's a more social cold call script that uses a lot of that same information. Hey, Tom, this is Mike. Have I caught you in the middle of anything? Oh, great. Hey, the reason why I'm reaching out is that I want to talk to you about something I'm working on. Are you free to get together for coffee or lunch? And the, this is where you're basically doing a quick close right out of the gate, you're trying to close for the next step of the process, which is the conversation. And so now a couple of thoughts here. One is you may have a better way of closing for that. This is nothing new to, to network marketing and people that do multi-level marketing. What I learned is, is that you want to be as vague as possible here, because if you get into detail here about, oh, it's a business opportunity and uh, you know, help you and whatnot, uh, your friend or your your friend or your family member will you know maybe try to avoid you. So you want to just focus on getting together with them in the conversation as quickly as possible, not in terms of as quickly as possible in terms of sharing as little as information as possible without misleading them or or being dishonest. And so that's what you want to do here. Now, below this section are are the remainder of our building blocks because at this point, Tom may have some questions where he may not might not agree to get together. So that's where if he asks questions, we could fall back to our other building blocks where he may say something like, well, what is it about? What are you working on? Or what is it? Tell me what it is before we agree to meet. Well, I'm working on something that helps people to, uh, and then here are your benefits and pain, uh, pen of, and here are your benefits and improvements. Excuse me. So, uh, you know, you're, you're sharing a little bit of information with him, still trying to close him. If he's still not agreeing to meet, you could, you know, fall back to try to ask him some questions. Maybe your questions can find a reason why he might want to meet with you or why you, how you can help him or why it makes sense to talk. Current state questions, pain points, product, and name drop examples. So these are fair, almost exactly the same building blocks. It's just basically putting them in a different order. This is an example of how once you build your sales message and create those building blocks, it's real easy to move those around to create different scripts. For example, we can use those same building blocks to also create our meeting script. So let's say that we close either with the formal script or the social script, and now we're meeting with the person that we scheduled a, a lunch with or coffee with. Well, it would be good to organize that call that it would be good to organize that meeting with some sort of structure and we can use our building blocks for that. So here's an introduction. So, Hey, how's your day going? You could talk about any recent event or weather or, or sports or whatnot. Where are you from? Maybe you know that already, but if you don't, and then the order here of building blocks has changed. So in the other script, we start out with our pain questions here. We're starting out with our current state questions because now we're in the meeting, you know, we're sitting down, we have their attention and we just want to learn more about them. What do you do? How long have you been doing that? And so I went through these questions earlier when we, I was talking about the, the uh, sales message, but these are your current state questions. So this is where you're learning about what's going on. You could then continue on to ask more questions about uh, to find out if they have any pain points. Remember I said the meeting and the conversation is 50, 50, 50% on you, 50% on them and 50% on you. So these questions really help to make that first 50% on them. Uh, a great way to organize that is that, let's say you're getting together for 30 minutes or 60 minutes. The first half of that meeting is all about them. You're just asking questions, learning about them. You can maybe share some pain points of you know, other people that you talk to. And then once you're ready to transition and talk about you, you've learned a lot about them. Oh, well, and then you can start to share some of the improvements that you helped to make. And here's your product details of how you help to make those improvements. And here's an example of someone that you created those improvements for. And then you could go for the close. Now, I just threw some trial close questions here as a kind of a placeholder for closing. Um, we have a full training module on, on how to close. 
So if you want more details on how to close at the end of the meeting, um, then, then be sure to check out that. But this, is an, uh, but this is a way to organize those different building blocks. So those are your sales scripts that you could use. Now let's wrap up, which is talking about a few common objections that can come up with in the world of MLM. And so the first one could be, I don't have time to meet. So this is one that would come up during the interaction. So you're trying to schedule that meeting, trying to, you know, you get back together with that person. Let's say you cold call someone, Hey, let's get together. And they say, Oh, I just don't have time. Hey, no problem at all. Uh, you know, we could get together down the road when your schedule lightens up, there's no rush. You know, I, the, we could talk about this later. No big deal. Uh, and then you, you still try to close them by saying, what, what do you think about penciling something down, something in down the road? So, Hey, let's pencil something in maybe two months out. So, um, you know, they might say, sure, and then you kind of leave it there. One thing about getting that soft close there is that when it's two months down the road, you have a reason to check back in with them. Hey, check him back in. We spoke two months ago. You said that you know, we would try to get together, and then you, you try to close again. So that, open, that creates a reason to open the door back up down the road without just, you know, take, you know, accept, without just complying that they don't have time and then moving on completely. You also may get the, uh, the objection that they don't have time regarding just doing the business opportunity. And so you could, instead of complying with that, you could say, oh, no problem at all. Oh, let me see here. You know what, this is, um, so this is, I, I obviously did not fix this slide, but what I wanted to put here was, so let's say they say, I don't have time to work on this. So, um, You know, I forgot what I was going to put as this uh, this objection response. So if they say I don't have time, let's let's just think about this in real time. So if they say I don't have time to work on this, then um, you know what you could do is you could go back to your benefits, your value points. If I just go go back to those, so you know you go go back to your benefits and say I I understand. Uh, well. If if we could you know create these improvements, would you would that be able to give you a reason to make more time you know or uh, if you were you know would these if would these benefits help you to uh, change your work situation to where maybe you at some point if you were able to achieve all these things and create a second stream of income and a passive stream of income and start your own business maybe you could leave your current job and uh, and would that create more that would create more time and not only for you to work on this business opportunity, but more time for you to do other things in your life other than work. So uh, just some thoughts there on how to respond to, I don't have time to work on this. Another objection is they might say, I can't afford this. So uh, that might refer to like the sign up fees and the purchase, the cost to join the business opportunity. And you could say something like, Oh, I hear you. Uh, we, we often help to, and so this is going back to your value points building block. We often help to increase wealth by a second stream of income, passive, in, uh, creating passive in, a recurring passive income, income stream, um, make it easier to start a business. If you could see these improvements, would that help you to justify finding the money or, you know, get rounding up the money to to uh, to invest in this particular area? Then of course, as you know, selling anything, you might run into objections of I'm I'm not interested. Oh, I understand. Uh, if I could ask you real quick, and so this is going back to your pain questions. Now, if you've asked all these questions al already, of course you can't really go back and ask them again. But let's say that when you're asking your questions earlier, you did not ask. You know, have you have you have you ever had any interest to start your own business or be your own boss? So let's say you skip that question earlier, and someone says I'm not in you know, I'm not really interested in this. Oh, hey, I understand. Um, but if I could ask you real quick, have you ever thought about create, starting your own business? And then they might say, well, yeah. Okay, well, and then you have the opportunity to ask a follow-up question. Well, what did, when was that? What did you do? What prevented you from moving forward? And so they, they you know, they might say something like, well, I, I, uh, I, didn't I, I didn't have an idea of what to start. Oh, well, see, that's what's great about this is this helps you to start your own business 
And you don't have to have an idea. The, the idea is right here. All you have to do is, you know, uh, invest the time and effort and you basically can be your own boss. So that's an example there of they gave the objection of I'm not interested and you deflected back to your pain questions and use that to find an opportunity to with a follow-up question and then go back to the close. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully that gives you some ideas of how to organize uh, your thoughts to create a sales message, use that sales message to create sales scripts, and then to progress uh, MLM prospects through a structured sales process uh, in order to improve your effectiveness. So if this has helped you in any way and you want to return the favor, very easy for you to do. Simply like, comment, share this video, subscribe to our channel, all or any of those. Don't cost you anything and help us tremendously. We would be great. Uh, very appreciative. If you do like some of these tips, you might want to follow us on any or all of these social platforms. I'll put a link to these in the description, but uh, we post daily sales tips on these in the form of 30 to 60 second uh, videos that are taken from all these long form videos. So be sure to follow and check us out. If you like some of the structure and tips that are provided here, this is all part of the smart sales system. So SMART stands for Sales Messaging and Response Tactics. We basically help salespeople to improve their results by getting them to communicate at a more optimum level by building their sales message. As you can see, that was the first thing we talked about here today. Once we have your sales message, we can then build your scripts and build your responses and whatnot. And so by having all that, you can become a smart salesperson. We refer to it as the SMART sales system because it's not just a bunch of tips, it's an actual step-by-step -step process that you can implement for yourself or for your sales team. And it starts with uh, level one of this is creating your sales message. That was the first thing we talked about here today. So that's the level one of the smart sales system. Once you have that, you can then create your sales scripts and emails and voicemails. And that's what we did here today. We created a sales message for the business opportunity and then use that to create sales scripts uh, by the way, you could also use that sales message that we created to create emails and voicemails and whatnot. And then once you have all that created, it's about move, progressing to level three, which is the kind of the how-to. So, uh, you know, I flipped through real quickly a sales process uh, that, you know, I mentioned that I mentioned is outlined in another, in another training module. So that's part of level three, how to make those cold calls, how to get around objections. So that's level three of the smart sales system. Now, the good news is, is if you want to implement the smart sales system for yourself, you can do all of that for free because it's all on YouTube. All of the smart sales system, there's a playlist on YouTube that takes you through all of this step by step, and it's completely free. The reason why we give that away for free is because the upgrade from there, if you want more, is our software application called Sales Scripter, which aligns with the smart sales system. For example, we, I showed you a process here today of how to create a sales message for the business opportunity. There's an area of sales scripter called the sales message builder that takes you through those steps and gives you a place to put all those bullet points. Once you enter all those bullet points in the sales message builder, there's an area of sales scripter called the sales playbook, which aligns with level two. That's a library of sales scripts and emails and voicemails and whatnot. And so you can... Um, and your sales message then populates all of those once you get it into Sales Scripter. And then Sales Scripter can help you with level three as well. And then if you want the upgrade from there would be, I certainly provide consulting hours to some of our clients where they purchase time with me. And I can basically help you to create your sales message, help you to create your scripts and emails and tools, and then help you with execution on level three as well. If that's interesting, but you're not sure which of those is the right fit for you or what direction to go, another option is everything we've discussed, everything we discuss on our YouTube play, Smart Selling Playlist is in our book called the Smart Sales System, Sell Smarter, Not Harder. This book basically aligns with all of those videos on YouTube and you can get a copy on Amazon here. That's pretty much it. If you want more information on any of that, the best place to go is salescriptor.com. You can, uh, there's free resources there. There's eBooks that you can opt in to receive that are completely free videos. There's a chat window. If you want to chat with us, uh, email address, if you want to send us an email and whatnot. Um, thanks for staying to the end of the video and we hope this was helpful and we will see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.